If you've been playing fiddle for even a little while, chances are you've heard someone mention shuffle bowing. Shuffle bowing is just a very common repetitive bowing pattern that's meant to establish a groove or a steady rhythm. Remember that all fiddle music has its origins in dance and that the fiddle player's job in, for instance, a square dance or a contra dance is to create a steady groove that, that the um, dancers will find predictable, that they can sort of they can predict where the strong beats are. They're going to kind of know where they are in the dance as the fiddle player is playing. And so all fiddle tunes are kind of constructed this way to be danceable, even if we're not going to dance to them. Even if we're playing in a bluegrass band and it's, we're playing at 180 beats per minute and it's too fast to dance to. We want to create a danceable groove. And the shuffle bow is one really one key strategy for creating that that danceable groove. So in this lesson, we're going to look at shuffle bowing. We're going to look at three different kinds of shuffle bow. Uh, one is called the Nashville shuffle. The other is called what I call the simple shuffle. And finally, the Georgia shuffle. Before I get into this lesson, just a, a word of, of warning. These shuffles are called different things by different players. There's some variation out there. So what I call the Nashville shuffle, some players might call the Georgia shuffle. Some players consider the simple shuffle a variation on the Nashville shuffle. And if you go onto the online discussion boards, you're going to you'll no doubt find a lot of heated discussion uh, about this. I'm not going to I'm not going to wade into that discussion. Um, in the end, what, what we call it is, is secondary to how we play it. It's not how we say it, it's how we play it. So um, consider my names for these shuffles just a sort of a matter of convenience. We have to call them something, I have to call them something, so these are the names that I've chosen. Let's talk about the Nashville shuffle. It's pretty straightforward, really. It's one long note followed by two short notes, a quarter note, followed by two eighth notes, if we're in 4-4 four, four, or 2-4 time. Um, this is sometimes called taters, and it's also, uh, that pattern is also used as an intro to a lot of fiddle tunes, where you hear that and so forth. So, one thing to keep in mind with the, uh, with the, um, the shuffle pattern, the, the Nashville shuffle pattern, is that it's a three note pattern, which means that if we start it, on a down bow, the first time we play the pattern, the next time we play the pattern, everything is going to reverse. So first time through, down, up, down, second time through, up, down, up. And then we're back to the beginning again, down, up, down, up, down, up. So let's practice that together. Let's just play an open A string. So starting on a down bow, up, down, up, down, You'll also notice that I'm adding a little bit of an accent. That first short note, that first eighth note, if it's uh, if we're counting it one tater two tater, it's on te that we're going to be accenting that beat. So down. So to accent that beat, I would suggest just speeding up your bow a little bit. You can use a little bit of additional pressure on the bow. Uh, you can sort of drive the bow down into the string with your first finger. Just kind of tip, tip that first finger to add a little bit of pressure on the stick. Not much. I would consider that optional. I think you can get the job done with just a little bit of bow speed. And be careful not to use too much bow because you'll kind of lose control of the rhythm if you use too much bow. Use about, try to use about an inch and a half, but just make it a very quick acceleration of the bow. So let's practice that together a little bit slower. Accent, 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 accent. 
The next uh, shuffle pattern that we're going to talk about is what I call the simple shuffle. Some players will, will consider this um, a variation on the, uh, the Nashville shuffle, and you can see why, because in a way it is a long, short, short bow pattern. In this pattern, we have four eighth notes, the first two are slurred, the second two are bowed as single bow strokes. So let's start this on a down bow. For instance, we would do So as you can hear, it is a combination of long and short notes, except our long note in this case happens to be a slur. The simple shuffle has a nice combination of smoothness and rhythmic and drive. In tunes where we have long stretches of eighth notes, this can be a really good pattern to put to use. Next and, and last, we have the Georgia shuffle pattern. I leave this one uh, for last because it's the trickiest one to learn. In this pattern, we're going to start from the last half beat of the previous measure, slur over the bar line, two more notes, and then play a single note with a, with a single bow stroke. I know it's very, very confusing. But what we have essentially is a three note slurred pattern followed by a one, a single, single bow stroke. Now, wait, there's more. We're going to start that three note slur on an up bow and we're going to play that single, uh, single stroke note as a down bow. So we have... Now, a word on, on bowing. One, we want to use the center of the bow for this, like the middle, say the middle third of the bow. And when we play that three note slur, we want to use just as much bow as we use for that down bow accented. So let's say if we use the whole middle third of the bow for the, the three note slur, we want to use the whole middle third of the bow for the down stroke. Otherwise, we're going to creep up or down the bow as we work our way through, through the, the shuffle. So. Now, like the simple shuffle, this is a shuffle pattern that you can apply to long wall-to-wall -wall stretches of eighth notes. Um, the only thing that's tricky about this is that uh, we're, we're going to tend to we're going to be starting this um, on, like I said, the, the last half beat of the previous measure. So if we're counting one and two and three and four and, it's on the and of four that we start this. One and two and three and four. those downstrokes to be happening on the strong beats, on the two and the four, on those, those beats that the mandolin player is playing a chop chord on. Da 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 bop, da da da, chop, da da da, chop. So that's, that's the reason. Sometimes we're not going to have that, an eighth note on that, that uh, and of four. So we're going to start the pattern with a two note slur and then from that point on, we're going to do the three note slur to one single pattern. And uh, that'll be demonstrated in the A section of Blackberry Blossom when you read through that in, in the exercise that's included with this lesson. So I've given you three different shuffle patterns. These patterns can be used interchangeably. And in the, the tune that I'm including with this lesson, if you sign up for my uh, email newsletter, uh, you, can, you can practice, for instance, uh, using the simple shuffle through the whole A part, or practically the whole A part of Blackberry Blossom. And in another version, you can practice uh, playing the Georgia shuffle through most of the A part. The reason that we can pick and choose and inter use these interchangeably, these shuffle patterns, is that they all do the same thing. They all hammer that back beat, that second and fourth beat, if we're in 4-4. Four, four. One, two, three, four. One, chop, two, chop. One, chop. To chop. Sometimes uh, th these tunes are written in 2-4, but it's basically the same thing. It's a rhythm built on, on twos. 
Um, if we were playing a waltz if, in 3-4 time, if we were playing a jig in 6-8 time or a slip jig in 9-8 time, these, these, these shuffle patterns don't work at all. So these are really specific to, to reels and breakdowns. But um, one way to create steady, a steady pulse, a steady rhythm, and keep things kind of interesting at the same time is to switch up these shuffle patterns as much as you're able to. So, um, and one thing that, that I haven't mentioned is that you can use no shuffle at all too as a, as a way of sort of switching up the beat and creating some rhythmic um, diversity, some interest, some interest in your, in your rhythmic approach, um, is to use choppy single strokes for a stretch and then go into uh, a simple shuffle or a, a Georgia shuffle. Um, mix it up. That's much more interesting for the listener and I think for the player too. Thanks again for watching. If you click on the subscribe link in the description on YouTube, I will send you a, uh, a copy of the sheet music I mentioned, the Blackberry Blossom. In one version, we're going to be playing the simple shuffle over the A part, and in another version, we'll be playing the Georgia shuffle over the A part, and we'll be using a little bit of uh, Nashville shuffle in the B part of the tune in both versions. Anyway, if you click on the link and subscribe to my email newsletter, I'll send you that sheet music. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can find me at eric on fiddle.com. That's E-R-I-C on fiddle.com. Thanks for watching and happy fiddling.